What's up? Welcome into the Hogue and Johns podcast. Happy Thursday. There is no Adam Johns today. I believe he is in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, which sounds really nice. And spring has not even started here in Chicago. Arizona sounds good. And with Johns not here, we decided to bring in a special guest. He's going to sit in for the whole pod. If you're watching on YouTube, he's already doing a dance. That did not take long. Pat Tomasulo is here. It's it's my uh, honor and my distinct pleasure, Adam, uh, to be with you on this on this esteemed podcast. I like that we're reunited. I don't know if a lot of people know we used to do a lot of things together on WGN. You were our uh, Bears insider on the morning show for some time, and then you big timed us and got a different job. Yeah, and you couldn't do it, but. I hear you may be able to continue doing it now. So there's a chance we may be trying to hit you up for some more free labor. Ah, well, see, I, the truth is, though, I nixed the free part after like yeah. a couple of years. <laughs> so <laughs> it was free. It was free for a minute. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm that is that is something I am uh, excited about because I, I miss I miss hanging out with you, you and, and Nick. Yeah. Nick just and, had another baby, by the way. Angry producer Nick just oh had another. God. uh yeah, I know. I didn't. It's amazing that he's produced two spawns that are as angry and as uh, vitriolic as him. But no, this this new one looks pretty pretty innocent so far. So not angry yet. That's good. Not angry yet. Yeah, I mean, you know, most newborns are generally not all that pleasant. But uh, she I seems mean, fine. Yeah, as a father to a ten month old right now, I can put up with angry Nick. Angry ten month old, not so much right. fun. No. It's, it's it's different, um, but welcome in, buddy. I, it's yes, we we've had a lot of good times on WGN. I am for somebody who is not a morning person. I am not a morning person. There's something special that you guys got going on there because I would just expect everybody to just be constantly in a horrible mood at six a.m. Yeah. and you guys somehow bring the energy, and I appreciate that very much. Well, I think we 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 generally are in a terrible mood. It's yeah. just we make it funny. <laughs> I, I wouldn't exactly say that the people on that show are necessarily the happiest, most jovial people. But, sure. you know, I think I think that's the key is I think it reflects how most people feel at that time of day when they're watching the show. Sure. I got to say, though, there's something about Paul Conrad that that lifts your spirits. I don't know why Paul Conrad is sometimes I think Paul Conrad was just. Um, hatched from an egg that was sent here from outer space. He is he is easily the most interesting man I have ever met in my entire life. Like if you knew some of his backstory, like, and I don't think I'm speaking out of turn here, but like when he was a kid, he had all these brothers and sisters. They used to <laughs> They used to travel all over the Midwest performing as a family song and dance troupe. He wore like later hosen. It was like an and the accordion. And then Paul, like Paul, has traveled all over the world. He got locked up in a Russian prison. In in at some point, he was traveling in Russia and ended up in jail for something. Like the dude has got more stories. And I have never met, he's hilarious, number one. He's 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 one of the most naturally uh, gifted, effortless comedic performers I've ever been around in my life. And the guy's, you know, commitment to a work-life balance is unlike anybody I've I've ever met in my life. I mean, you know how, how it is in this in this field. You know, we're in related fields. You never think you're doing enough. You never think, you know, you you've got enough. Of that dude at 10:05 every day is on the Edens. <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. It's true. Wow, you threw a lot at us there, though. I didn't know about the whole Russian detention thing going on. Uh, I forget why he got locked up in in Russia, but he most certainly did get locked up in Russia. Uh, Bert Kreischer has a story like that. Yes. Yeah. With the Russian mob. Yeah, something similar. Yeah. I don't know if he actually got locked up, but he like hung out with the mob, like the he, legit mob. He was hanging mob. out with the Russian, yeah. He was hanging out with a Russian mobster. 
That's awesome. Uh, well, uh, that's probably a good segue because you have a new comedy special out uh, right now that people should yeah. find. First of all, your YouTube page, Pat Tomasulo. Yeah. Find him on YouTube. Uh, it, you know, if you're watching this on YouTube, maybe just open up a different browser or wait till we're done here. But yeah, right. go find the Pat Tomasulo uh, YouTube page. He's got the podcast going on there and a full one hour special that is hilarious i mean as a fan of as a fan of stand-up comedy i was very excited when i heard you were doing this pat and watched the whole thing right away i think the day you released it last week very well done um and i we i hope some of our listeners are going to check it out right away because yeah no not as much as i hope some of your listeners yeah go that's true check, check it out right away um yeah no thank you Thank you for uh, for that. The um, the re reaction to it has been has been overwhelmingly positive, which has been uh, very nice. Yeah, it was a long, a long time coming. It was I'm, I'm happy with it. You know, I'm, I'm my own worst. Uh, I'm my own worst critic. So I'm the type that when I do something that I think is good, inevitably within a couple of weeks, I hate it and want to do the whole thing over again. But uh, this is this is one thing I've done where I've recorded it in December. And what are we in now? April? Is that almost four months later? Yeah. Like, I'm still happy with it. So I think if I can give any endorsement of my own work, the fact that I don't hate it four months later is probably the highest praise I can give it. I like it. It's a good sign that it's pretty good. I I like it still. And I watched it last week. So maybe I'll maybe I'll get back to you in four months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, give it four months where I'm sure four months is enough time for some of it to age poorly and for people to try and cancel me. So give it four months and we'll see what happens. Yeah, it, it, it'll it'll uh, it'll inevitably come. Hey, um, I have a couple questions about this, putting this special yeah. together. And, and, and just so our listeners go, no, Pat is contractually obligated to talk about the Bears at some point coming on this podcast. So we yeah. will get to some Bears talk, I promise. Uh, how long does it take to write? A one-hour comedy special. Um, it depends, you know. I've been doing stand-up for twelve years, and there are some bits in the special that maybe I did versions of twelve years ago. Right? Mm -hmm. um, there are some that have been in my act pretty consistently for for a while. Um, but it's weird. There are a lot of bits that I did in the special that I did years ago and kind of stopped doing and then brought them back because I thought they were they were good. Um, so some of the stuff, little seeds of it were written 10 years ago. Um, a lot of it's been written over the last three or four years. You know, we lost a year and a half to uh, to COVID. Yep. For that time, it was doing a ton of um doing a ton of virtual shows and Zoom shows. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of glad for it. I mean, you know, obviously, I wish there was no pandemic, but I was supposed to initially do this in uh, 2020, December of 2020. And then obviously that that got uh, that got the kibosh. So I, I ended up having a, a year and a half longer than I anticipated to do this special. And that's when I wrote a lot of the topical stuff, like the stuff about Trump and the stuff about, um, you know, Black Lives Matter and the stuff about voting and, the you know, the stuff about, uh, you know, Jake from State Farm and all that. Like that was all stuff that got written in the last year, year and a half tops. Yeah. Well, I don't want to give any of that stuff away because people got to watch it. But there's uh, there was a couple of the, the, the Jake from State Farm thing was pretty funny. I enjoyed that a lot. That I, that was I think that was my favorite bit of that whole <laughs> of that <laughs> cuz that guy the original Jake from State Farm man nobody got boned more than that guy. That dude had the role of a lifetime and then just done. Yeah. So you, that's a that's the uh, with the commercial where he was like uh, getting uh, called at like khakis? yeah the khakis yeah 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 and then and everybody loved that guy and then gone no yeah <laughs> it's it's pretty good and then my you know as as uh, my sister had a barn wedding so I did, I, yeah. I, so I did my brother-in-law over the summer 
Yeah, so I enjoyed the... Is, is, was that what inspired that part? Was the barn wedding yes, you went to? Yes, I yeah. sweat my nuts off. Now, it, it, as far as barn weddings go, his, his was a nice barn wedding. But it's, you know, it's this whole Chip and Joanna effect. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Everybody's doing what Chip and Joanna my do. My seven-year-old loves Chip and Joanna. Oh, Chip and Joanna. They're so insufferable. Pat McGann has just the best line about, you know, Pat McGann. Yes, absolutely. Like he has the best line. I don't know if he, he, I don't know if he did it in his special, but he's like, that Chip and Joanna, they're so happy. I can't <laughs> wait till they're not happy. Because <laughs> you know that's inevitable. There's no way that can last. That kind of happiness with all that, with There's all that. There's also no way they're as happy as they look on that show. Happy. No way. Oh, it's, it's so insufferable. That whole. Now I will say they both have. She has fantastic taste. Uh-huh. I go into the Target with that magnolia section. I'm scooping up everything. I'm scooping up book, book, bookends. I don't even have books. Like she's woman has great taste, but it's the whole. You know, it's the whole. He's the big dope who doesn't know anything and. He's doing oh oh chip how could you do that? It's a whole, and they do bits they do comedian that see that is a comedian I don't like I don't chip. like the bits I don't I don't like the bits I don't like okay. when they have to do filler just build the house yeah see, and I everything think- on those renovation shows we renovated the house we're currently in and it's like you know you watch these renovation shows and they're like they had a budget of eighty thousand dollars oh it's ridiculous. And then yeah. we built them a 6,000 square foot home. It's like, come on. You can't even, you, with the budgets they use in these home shows, you can't even do a powder room with those budgets. No, I love that you brought that up because we got a quote for, we didn't even want to redo our whole bathroom. We just right. wanted a new tub and a new shower, like half of the bathroom. Don't touch the countertops, nothing n- right. n- n- Nothing else, just that. 20K? 20K! Yeah. How does it cost that much? Yeah. Chip and Joanna say that costs like four grand. Yeah, Chip and Joanna, they'll outfit your whole home wall to wall in marble for twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, that's Chip and Joanna. Yes. Uh, what? Well, uh, what point do you get worried that uh, somebody's gonna come up to you in a in a stand up and uh, and Will Smith you? Uh, you know, I've never really thought about that. I I have thought about like how I would react to that prior to the Will Smith thing, right? Because, you know, I think people are a little bit more emboldened overall now, you know, just to tell you how they feel about things. I've I've heard in the past of comedians being uh, confronted that way. But my feeling is, and I don't know, maybe we need Lester Munson on here. We need a legal expert of some sort. But my feeling is if I'm on stage, and you make an attempt to get on that stage, like I feel I'm well within my rights to pick up a microphone stand like so and hit you with it. Mm -hmm. Because to me, once you start getting on that stage, and I'm not saying I would do that, I'm just thinking out loud. But to me, once you start an attempt to get on that stage, you're entering an you're entering my area. You're not there to do anything but to harm me, right? That is a, a threatening move to me if somebody were to try and get on a stage. I don't know how I would handle it. I I gotta tell you, I like I watching Chris Rock. I mean, dude, first off, that guy has a granite chin. Yeah. I mean, that guy has a jaw like Rocky Marciano. He didn't even he didn't even budge when he got hit. But I think you're so you're just so in shock, right? Like you could see, I could see as a comedian after it happened, like just his wheels turning, like thinking, trying to think of maybe a joke to say, trying to think of something witty to say, but also like still trying to process what in God's name just happened. I don't know. I I don't worry about it all that much personally. I well, If you think about stuff like that when you're on stage, If you think about all the things that could go, I mean, there are such a myriad of things that can go wrong every time you get on stage. If you're if you're focused on that, you're going to be totally paralyzed. Well, I was surprised because when I was in L.A. for the Super Bowl, Pat Finley and I went to the comedy store, which is uh, a cool experience. Yeah. World famous. Hecklers are real, man. Like they heckle it at the store. Oh my goodness! I couldn't. I couldn't believe how quick it happened. Like, 
like just for shut being up. A- you're at a store. Why? Are, like yeah. laugh. You're not part of the show, though. It, it wasn't even so much heckling as it was just like there was a person in the front row and she they want thought to be involved she, in the show. She thought like she got engaged by one comedian one time and she thought the rest of the night was her show. Right. I couldn't believe it. It just was so uh, insensitive. Yeah, that's what it is more than anything. Like the the days of like heck, that's not what you encounter. You don't encounter the guy being like, you suck. Right, it's right. it's people who like when you're setting up a joke with a rhetorical question, right, where there's clearly going to be a punchline, like they'll answer the question mm-hmm. or they'll guess your punchline. Right. Or they'll or they're just being disruptive and talking. That is what you get more than the um, traditional heckler type. Right. So and I would say I would argue it's 100 times more annoying because if somebody engages you negatively, the audience is on your side. Mm -hmm. Right. But if somebody is just being a nuisance, a lot of times, you know, half the room can't even hear them or doesn't know what they're saying or doing. It's a little bit tougher to navigate. Yeah, no, I understand that. Um, You know, in Chris Rock's case, where is that fine line between like, look, you want to be funny. You there's always a line, right, that you you want to approach. Yeah. Sometimes you probably go over it. Yeah, of course. Um. But, you know, there's probably some things that did we ever find out that Chris Rock know about the the hair loss? I don't know. Not? He he's hasn't not, talked. Uh, he's not said anything. But I, yeah. I can guarantee you this just from watching that video. That was not a written joke. That was clearly something interesting. He just noticed her and just I mean, there's no way. First off, there's no way Chris Rock, the comedic genius that he is would purposely make a G.I. Jane joke for the Oscars because <laughs> it's not a good joke. It's just like an off-the-cuff remark. He saw her. So, yeah, I did he know? I don't know. Probably I, not, though, then, in that situation. But listen, she's, I don't know. We're getting in the weeds here, but she's talked about it. She's talked about how comfortable she is being bald and how much she likes it. It was not a bad joke. You know, guy, I'm not going to demonize will smith god knows he's got some things going on if if that's all it took for him to get up and slap a guy um yeah but no, i don't know i don't think chris rock is has really said much about it yet i'd be interested to see that next stand-up special you got to address it at some point yeah but- i think you know that's the thing too is that like you know he's on the road right now and that's the tough part as a comic is i'm sure he would love to um you know, in the old days, like he could talk about it in the clubs and nobody would know about it. You wouldn't know about it until it came on special. Right. Right. But now, when everybody in an arena that or a theater that he's at has a has a cell phone or is going to go home and, and tweet about it, like he can't even really workshop that material yet, you know, without it getting out. Right. Which is why I think I don't think he's talked about it yet. I think he has said even on stage that he's taken a little while to think about it and then he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna talk about it well that's what's kind of cool about the comedy store they take your phones oh do they oh yeah they take your phones and and i guess there's nothing that would have prevented me from walking out of there and tweeting something about it but right uh from memory but i don't know there's kind of an honor code there you respect the did you have to process. put, did they put it in like one of those pouches, like one of those yonder pouches? That's what they did, huh? Yeah, yeah. And you get to keep it on you. Yeah. But you're not supposed to take it out. Oh, that's good. I thought it was cool. Nice. I wish places here would do that. Yeah. Half the um, club here just got bouncers, which is nice. Yeah, they needed more of those. I'll tell you that. All right, guys, grilling season is almost here. I promise you, you can feel it. You can taste it. I've had a couple days where I'm like, today's the day, and then it just gets cold at the last second. You can't do it, but I'm telling you, it's here. And when you get out there, you're going to want Omaha Steaks and get that awesome styrofoam cooler that shows up with the dry ice inside, just piled in there with all different kinds of meats it's the best. Visit omahasteaks.com. Enter Adam into the search bar and order the Omaha Steaks sampler today. You'll save over 50%, plus you'll get 12 free Omaha Steak 
burgers free with your order. This package has it all from the butcher cut filet mignons to caramel apple tartlets. Every order is backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee and delivered safely to your doorstep. I just got mine the other day. There's pork chops in there. There's fillets. I'm thinking tonight I'm going to put those caramel apple tartlets in the oven because they just sound so good. So visit omahasteaks.com. Type keyword Adam into the search bar to take advantage of these exclusive offers. They even have a touchdown game day pack for all of your game day needs. There's a reason why Omaha Steaks has been the leader of gourmet steaks and food since 1917. No one, and I mean no one, comes close to matching the flavor, tenderness, and value of Omaha Steaks. That's omahasteaks.com, keyword Adam. No one likes waiting on a paycheck, especially when you've got bills due. Good thing there's Chime. Now you can get your paycheck up to two days early with direct deposit. It's up to two more days to save, pay bills, and generally just feel good about your money situation. But Chime is more than just about getting paid early. It's also an award-winning mobile app, checking account, debit card, and optional savings account. So what are you waiting for? Hopefully not your paycheck. Get started with Chime today. Applying for a free account takes less than two minutes. Get started at Chime.com slash Adams. That's Chime.com slash Adams. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stride Bank North America pursuant to a license from Visa USA, Chime checking account, and a $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply for the secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card. Regular on-time payment history can have a positive impact on your credit score. Impact the score may vary, and some user scores may not approve. All right. So what is uh, what has your whole reaction been to... See, here's the thing about when I used to come on with you and we talk bears... Yeah, you know, we we managed to, uh, I think, make it hopefully make it entertaining every week. Sure, you did. But my you God, did all the we, work. I did well, we were talking about the same thing every week or every season. You know what I mean? Right. Like every week would be a different game that we're talking about. Right. But it was just like every we had. I feel like it's been that way for for the sixteen years I've been here with this yeah. team. It's it's like an endless cycle. I just I don't know how Bears fans do it. Quite frankly, we respect everybody who listens to this podcast and yeah. stays loyal to it because God bless you. You know, it's, uh, I don't know, man. We always cling to just the slightest glimmer of hope with this team, (laughs) right? And and we always, and we always find ways, we always find ways to kind of rationalize why things went wrong, right? Like, you know, even though he's not on, on the Bears anymore, like Mitch Trubisky, like everybody loves, Mitch Trubisky now, right? And and listen, maybe Mitch Trubisky with a, a more stable coaching regime and offensive coordinator regime may have been better than he was here. But it's like we're always finding, like, oh, obviously Nagy was the problem. Obviously, you know. Mm-hmm. But it's like no, there's always a new Nagy. There's always a new, you know, there's a, always a new Ryan Pace, right? You know, that – I don't know. What I should be asking you this. What do you, what do you feel? I mean, I it concerned me that they didn't hire an offensive minded coach, right? And and you're hiring a, a first time coach who hires a first time play caller. You know, that to me gives me gives me pause. Um, they did, they did a lot of things, Pat, where. None of us will be surprised if four years from now we're being like, we're in the same spot. How in the world did they hire another first time general manager? They right. went defense instead of offense with right. the head coach. And yeah, to your point, they hired a first a guy who's never called plays in the NFL to be the, the guy that develops hear, Justin Fields. If I hear uh, McCaskey say one more time about how this is a learning experience for him, I'm I'm going to put my head through a wall. Yeah. And that's why you have no that's why you have no confidence in this team. Well, Ted's Ted's being a good teacher. That's what George said last week at the <laughs> yeah. Ted's, Ted's a good that's teacher. That's the teacher you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and Bill Polian who's not had a full-time NFL job in how many years? Yes, I the t- 10, over 10, I think. It's been a decade. Then, think, yeah, it was at least a decade. Yeah. It was at least a decade. I got I got accused of ageism when I made that. Well, yeah, you're right. You're right. Heads have 
Presidents and heads of football operations should not be older than 80 years old. Ageism. Like that's uh, if you're I mean, I guess that applies if you're um, if you're you're passing on qualified candidates who are, you know, I don't know, 55 as opposed to cheaper 20 year olds. Right. Right. But 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 talking about guys who are in their 80s and whether or not they're still qualified to be doing things like that's a different conversation to me. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I get it. No, I call me, call me ageist. I don't care. <laughs> I don't want an 80 year old guy making decisions for a, for a football team. Yeah. Especially when you've been out of the NFL, that dude, that is a lifetime in the NFL. You were out of the NFL for five years and, and I have concerns. That league changes so quickly and so rapidly that unless you're in it every day, you're out of the league for 10 years is is ridiculously long. Well, yeah, especially because entire schemes change in, right. in that in that time. Um I do then- like I do like seeing you know, I like seeing videos of Justin Fields working out with with Darnell Mooney. I like that there's you know that that's happening, right? That's that's got to make see, you feel a little Pat, good. Yeah, but that goes back to what we, we we were just talking about. It's like the Sorry. same thing. I need every, something. I got to cling year. to something. Like I remember when Jay Cutler was throwing to Brandon Marshall in May down in Florida, wherever the hell they were doing it. Like right. every quarterback and every wide receiver, Mitch Mitch would gather the guys in the off season. They would do that too. I mean, it's at this point, it's. It's a red flag if you don't see that somewhere on Instagram. I will say that in regards to the comparison to Jay Cutler and Brandon Marshall, I do I do consider or, or feel that uh, Fields and Darnell Mooney are, uh, are two people of a completely different temperament <laughs> and and mental health level. <laughs> they both they both seem like they're pretty stable, you know. Non ego guys. Now, once Mooney gets 1500 receiving yards, that might change him completely. Who knows? But I do feel like both of those guys are a little bit more level headed and down to earth. So, and then when it comes, you were saying there's always a new Ryan, there's always a new Matt Nagy, there's always yeah. a new next quarterback, right? And that's where right. with Justin Fields, I'm like, I don't want to even say torn because that's the right, I, I, I don't, I can't no, say I, if it. I've ever been um, opinionated with a quarterback to where I like everything about how he's built, what he has, even what he showed at times. Right. And yet there there was still enough last year that was that just leaves you going uh, yeah. It's another no. Bears quarterback. We know where this goes. I'm trying not to uh I'm trying not to take that position, but I will say, and you've watched a lot more tape than I have, but, you know, there were throughout the course of that season, a lot of throws he missed. Yeah. Like a lot of throws. And, you know, you can, you can blame the scheme. You can blame the coach. You can blame the play calling for not allowing him to get into a rhythm to, make all of those throws, but there was plenty of blame to go around. I mean, I, I mean, there were throws he should have, he should have completed that he didn't throws that, you know, if you want to, if you're hoping that he's the next Patrick Mahomes or, you know, Deshaun Watson minus getting massages. Um, if, if you want to think, you know, those are throws those guys made. Right. And, and, too much comparison can be a bad thing too, right? I mean, those guys were in were in different situations. But no, I I am I'm of the same mind as you. Um, and that's why I think you cling to anything that seems even the slightest bit encouraging. The glimmer right? of you hope. go back and you go back and you look at those tapes of those, you know, the great runs he had and the throws he made. And you're like, ah, that's the guy, which is yeah. with the right coach. He could do that all the time. But I don't know. I don't think anybody knows. Well, I will say I am like you. I am. I do have my doubts. Well, and for all the things we just brought up, you know, defensive coach, uh, guy who's never called plays in the NFL, it may all work. 
It may all work. That's the crazy I, thing. We don't know. Hey, where do you come down on the uh, the stadium thing? Oh, Lori, Li- Lori Lightfoot says that she can offer uh, the Bears more than any suburb ever could, and I'm just like, how? How is Chicago you- ever? Chicago never gets stadiums right. Never. Right. No, they they've got to go. They've got to go. There's there's no way, and every Bears fan should want them to go. Honestly, right? I mean, what's the big inconvenience? Eight times a year, you got to drive out to Arlington Heights. They're going to make a ton more money there. They're going to have a ton more resources there. It, it's going to be infinitely better than anything they could do to Soldier Field. You could have a Super Bowl there. I mean, it's it, it benefits the it benefits them in in incalculable ways compared to staying in in Chicago. Yeah, although I guess if you're that one guy in the South Loop with with season tickets, you can walk over the. It's a nightmare, man. Bridge. It's everybody else. It's, it's a nightmare to get into. It's a nightmare oh. to get out. Get out of. Um, no, I don't. Listen, if it brings the Super Bowl, you know, attachment to them being on the lakefront will go right out the window. It's not like it's not. It's not. We got to stop pretending like it's Wrigley Field. You know, it's not. Right. It's it's just not it, that kind of. It doesn't have that kind of mystique and, and aura about it. No, and uh, you. I always love the lakefront thing. Like we got to have the shot of the lake. You could still have the shot of the lakefront. Right. When when you watch the New York Giants, right, or the Jets on TV. Yeah, you back up far enough in that helicopter. Sure. Yeah, they show you Manhattan. They're not showing you Newark. The, yeah. the, what a beautiful drive, by the way, going from the New York airport to to the Meadowlands. Oh uh, yeah, it's like uh, uh, it's like the Sopranos drive is what yeah. that is. With They're not the showing you that. They're showing you the Statue of Liberty and and right. the Empire State Building. Nobody's going to care. No, I. They win fourteen games and nobody will care. Well, the winning fourteen games part, though. Well, I, again, once they move into a new stadium. <laughs> uh, hey, the uh, special is called "What a Time to Be Alive." It is a it is a time to be alive right now. Uh, plenty of material for comedians like Pat Tomasulo. Uh, it, it, it's like uh, I was trying to explain this to somebody, um, and I hope it it's not at all an insult or in any ways, but it's like uh, listening, watching your stand up. It's like, um, like a less angry Bill Burr. Is oh, you that, think so? Yeah. Is I've that okay? That. Is that a compliment? Yeah, I don't know. That's yeah. I've gotten that comparison before. But it's, some people, so some people on YouTube have, have stated that I'm uh, imitating Bill Burr. Uh, oh, that's, and that's not at all what I meant. No. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I no, I know. Yeah. It's a similar kind of, uh, you know, angry white guy ranting. Yeah, I can see, I can see the comparison. But kind of calling out, uh, you know, groups that should be called out, like twenty-year-old yeah. white people. Yeah. Oh, you took like the ones. Yeah. I enjoyed that one a lot. Did you like that one? Yeah. Yeah, they were the yeah the the bit is that the, like that's when the Black Lives Matter protests were happening. Like that was when white kids in their twenties really shined. Yeah. <laughs> like every protest had at least one fat white girl with blue hair. Right, just screaming in some cops' face. They were the ones causing all the ruckus. Yeah, half the time. Like you just know that at least once when one of those girls showed up at a protest, they were like, "You know what? We got enough people, Clarissa. We're good." Yeah, go home. Turn around. You can get the train back to Barrington. Run along now. (laughs) Hurry up. The worst. Uh, That's awesome. Well, uh, that's the fun of it, man. The fun of it is. The fun of it is taking those topics and threading the needle. You know, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen on the first shot, but no, it uh, it's fun. It's fun to do that. Do you watch Curb Your Enthusiasm? Love it. Oh, I have so many moments in my, I had a moment last week where uh, I was, I was walking downtown where the, the, well, it's not downtown. It's like West Loop where the new CHGO studios are. I was walking yeah. from my car in and there was a, um, like a daycare you know they were they were pushing these two. What do you even call them? Yeah, like yeah, uh, big, like two by four strollers. Yeah, but they had like six kids in each one. Oh it's yeah, like a limo of the like the, the shopping carts you see in Mariano's. They have the yeah. like the cars, whatever. It's like thirty degrees out. None of the kids are wearing hats. 
No. Yeah, but kids aren't like young kids just impervious to the cold. Yeah, they are. But, you know, I'm still the dad in me. And I'm like, yeah. I couldn't resist not saying anything. I had to say I, something. You said something to them? Oh, yeah. Look at you. You're the king of confrontation. What did you say to them? I was just like, hey, don't you think those kids should be wearing hats? It's cold out here. Yeah. And what did they say? Well, they what they should have said, what they should have said is, where's your hat? Because I wasn't wearing one. <laughs> but they didn't. I don't know what it is when you're young. You seem to be impervious to the cold. Like, have you ever driven by, like, a nightclub in the middle of January? Like, nobody is more impervious to the cold than women between the ages of 21 and 24 years old. Oh, yeah. No jackets. I just want to go and throw jackets on all of them. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. Totally impervious to the cold. No feeling of cold. That's... You know, it's in uh, like uh, this. Would they still do Santa Con or whatever the hell they called that? Oh, T box. Yeah, Santa Con. Where they what? run around? Where they run around in pajamas in Wrigleyville in the middle of the um, afternoon? Yeah, eating cereal and drinking beer. And it's always freezing, and nobody's ever wearing any clothes. Could you? Like. Could you, I, you know, I try to imagine probably the like if you wanted to just hurt me really badly, what you could do to me, and I think. Dropping me off dead in the middle of T box without a camera and a microphone to make fun of them all would probably be the worst punishment that could ever be doled out to me. Yeah, I could see that. T box, you uh, you can we still find that video? You did a you did a bit out there I once. Did, yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's on. It's got to be on a YouTube somewhere. Pat you Tom Sulo T box. That was hilarious. It's a trip, man. How's your dog? My dog's great. Thank you for asking. Yeah. I think she's right out the door right now. Probably. Well, I, know. I know how much she matters to you. Oh, I love my dog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's good. We're going to go for a walk in a little bit. Nice. Yeah, I'm that kind of dog, Dad. I don't neglect her. She's the best. I got to say, uh, I don't know how people in the city do it with the dogs. Like I saw, so. well, like, well, there's just like nowhere for them to go. There's nowhere. There's really nowhere for them. And anywhere where any piece of dirt or grass that you could go, they all have signs now and gates that say no oh, dogs. Yeah. You know what? I let them go anywhere. What makes what makes your law? I hate when I see those. Right. Because I live in a neighborhood that's very residential where um, there is a lot of grass. And some okay. people on the parkway, that's what they call that little area past the past the sidewalk. They'll put please not on our lawn. Oh, so go on all of your neighbor's lawns? Is that what you're trying to say? Your lawn is so much more important and special than 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 their lawn. They're like, please not on. Didn't say anything about me. I'm going to take a shit on their lawn next time. How about wow. that? Can I say that on this podcast? Oh, absolutely. All right, I said it. Yeah, you, you just can't. You fire. can't just. Gonna, yeah, you can't physically do trout. it on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to drop yeah. trout right in front of your house. See what you think of that. <laughs> Tries me crazy. Uh, they don't even own that land. You know they don't own that property. No, that's the city's. The city owns that property. property. You yeah. just are maintaining that property. Don't. It's not my fault. You were dopey enough to spend eight grand on landscaping for a piece of land that you don't own. You big dummy. Fair. I point. know this because I'm getting landscaping quotes right now. Have you gotten landscaping quotes in in recently? Have you got any of these? Oh yeah, out here in the uh, burbs. That's all we do. Kidding me? I could put a kid through college for a year with how much they want to do landscaping on this house. It's unbelievable. And then you know what happens is my my wife's family visits from uh, Wisconsin. You know, where those are men. Th those are men. They're not like you and me. Yeah. You know. know. Yeah. yeah. We're not. You know, we're we're mm, quotes men. These are guys who like do things. Mm -hmm. Like her stepdad put siding on his entire house. That's impressive. Put siding on his house. Did an underground automated sprinkling system, and so these guys come to visit me. It's like I can't tell them what I'm going to pay. What I'm going to pay for this? I'm like I got to get the concrete in my gangway ripped up. And her brother's like, "Well, just just rent a jackhammer. I'm like just rent a jackhammer. I'm like who, do you know who you're talking to? Do I? In all of the years we've known each other, is there anything about me that would indicate to you that I'm skilled enough? To use it, but to them, it's just like, oh, it's easy. Yeah. You just jackhammer and wheel away the cement and just pour some new cement. That's just not, I wasn't raised that way. Plus, there's a place to rent a jackhammer on every city corner, right? Right. Just, just go get one. 
Then I'm like, I just moved into this house. I'm like, look around at this house. This is not a house where you try try things. This house is a finished product. It's taken me it's taken me 22 years to get in this house. I'm not going to start DIYing things now. Well, and also, even if you do do it and do it properly, it still takes five times as long as just paying somebody to do it properly. That's it too. That's it too. When I could just go and work two shows that night mm-hmm. and and make enough to pay for the jackhammer guy to come to my house and have way more fun doing it. Right. You're yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, well, yes, it's called What a Time to Be Alive. Check it out on YouTube. I promise you, you will not regret it. Uh, and uh, I, actually, I think I'm going to watch it again, Pat. Because I, I Really? I, because because my wife hasn't seen it yet, and I know that half of the topics you address, she's going to love. Good. So That makes uh, me so happy. Yeah, anybody out there, listen, if, if you like even a little bit of what I do on WGN, Adam, I think you would agree this is about – a hundred times what I do on WGN. It's a oh, whole yeah. hour of just, and if you don't like me and you can't stand me, hate watch me because that just boosts the numbers. And then I appear in more news feeds on YouTube. So either way, watch the special. And the funny thing is you guys get away with a lot. You guys get away with a good amount of things on WGN that the other, uh, the other local channels would not let happen. We get and away yet- with an alarming amount on yeah. that show. And this is like, like you said, a hundred times that. Yeah. So that's awesome. All right, Pat, uh, follow him on Twitter at Pat, Pat Thomas Sulo as well. Thank you for jumping on today. It was uh, good talking to you. And uh, I don't know, maybe I'll see you over there. At Channel nine sometime soon. Got it, buddy. Can't thank you enough. All right. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Adam Hoagie. You can follow John Z too at Adam Johns. And uh, hopefully he'll be back from Arizona. He should probably just stay there, though, at this rate with our uh, beautiful Chicago spring. We'll be back, though, next week on Tuesday. We'll talk to you then. Hey, what's up, Flues?